Amen. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His love endures forever. to the Lord. Most awesome and wonderful mercy and grace. We honor you today, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for being here with us today. Thank you for your awesome promises, Father. Oh, Lord, you woke us up this morning, Father, in our right minds. Oh, where would we be, Father, if it were not for you? Lord, help us to know the presence of the Holy Spirit here. You are here with us today. May we be open to your leading, your healing, your anointing. Oh, Lord, to your sensitive speaking, your word, to alert us to your calling, Father. Lord, we declare it. We proclaim it. We shout it that you are always welcome here. You are always present here with us, here among us. Oh, thank you, Lord, for blessing your people today, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for blessing this service, Father. Thank you for all that you do for us daily, Lord, your compassion. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in this service. For every need, for every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you, Jesus Christ the Lord. We pray all these things in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' most precious and holy name, amen. So Moses went out and reported the Lord's words to the people. He gathered the 70 elders and stationed them around the tab tabernacle. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Then he gave the 70 elders the same spirit that was upon Moses. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But this never happened again. 
two men, Eldad and Medad, had stayed behind in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but they had not gone out to the tabernacle. Yet the spirit rested upon them as well. So they prophesied there in the camp. A young man ran and reported to Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' assistant since his youth, protested. Moses, my master, make them stop. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them all. Then Moses returned to the camp with the elders of Israel. Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers and they received the Holy Spirit. A life of giving ought to be our response to the new life of blessings that God has bestowed upon us. Our giving should reflect our stewardship of what God has entrusted to our care. Let us worship the Lord with our giving. You may give by mailing your tithe and offering to Wayman AMEC, 803 West Olive Street, Bloomington, Illinois, 61701. Or you may use the app Givelify. Or you may go to our website, Wayman AMEC.com. Let us pray. Creator God, the source of everything, we bless you and ask that you bless the givers and the gift. Let us pray. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? God, we thank and we praise you. We give you glory and honor. But this is the day that you have made, a day that we've never seen before, a day that we are excited about what you are going to do. God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We adore you. We love you this morning. God, we ask that you would wrap your arms of comfort and care around those who are grieving, bereaved, and mourning. Lord, we ask for peace in Ukraine. We ask that they would sit down at the conference table and negotiate peace. Lord, we pray for Vladimir Putin. We pray that he would come to know you in a very personal way, that you, Lord, would baptize him with the Holy Spirit, that you, Lord, would touch his life and that he would know that war is not the answer. God, we pray for all the other nations we pray for peace. Oh, God, we just thank you for your love and your care. We pray for the people of Ukraine, that you would watch over them, you would protect them, and they would be safe. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A very quick announcement. There will be no Bible study this Tuesday. We will have Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday, March 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Bible study will resume on March 8th at 6.30. We will continue our study of the baptism with the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifts. Please read 1 Corinthians chapter 14.
Praise the Lord, let us pray. Lord God, have your way. Speak a word, a word of encouragement. Speak a word, Lord, have your way this morning. Use me to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Something is missing. Acts chapter 19 verses one through seven hear the word of the lord uh, while, yeah while apollos was at corinth paul took the road through the interior and arrived at ephesus there he found some disciples and asked them did you receive the holy spirit when you believe they answered no we have not even heard that there is a holy spirit so Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There are about 12 men in all." Close quote. A week of ups and downs on the world news stage has had us rejoicing and on our knees. I am asking that we pray that Vladimir Putin a member of the Russian Orthodox Church with deep Orthodox beliefs and ultra conservatism has a personal encounter with Jesus Christ soon and very soon. Edwin Starr told us back in 1970, war, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Listen to me, oh war, I despise because it means destruction of innocent lives. War means tears to thousands of mothers' eyes when their sons and daughters go off to fight and lose their life. Also pray for peaceful and dis diplomatic end to this man's desire for control and nostalgia for what was. How does this affect us personally? gas prices and other prices, the stock market will go up. If the United States joins the war, our children will go. Now, some of us rejoiced when President Biden nominated Judge Kentanji Brown Jackson to become the 116th Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court. We pray she passes the confirmation hearing. We scored some victories on the justice and accountability from this week. Ahmaud Arbery's murderers were found guilty of hate crime. Former police officers were found guilty of violating George Floyd's civil rights. We pray for justice and accountability. 
because there are many ongoing cases and we add cases daily. Many are dealing with grief, bereavement, mourning, and sickness on the home front. Our prayers continue for all in need of help. Since the beginning of the year, we've been exploring the meaning of the baptism with the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts against the backdrop of the church's birth and church growth. God poured out the Holy Spirit upon the believers and blessed them with the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues at the church's birth. The church was then blessed with 8,000 members in a few weeks. Wow. The Holy Spirit continues to empower the growth of the church. Remember, the disciples received their marching orders in Acts chapter 1, verses 8. It reads as so, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, close quote. The disciples were scattered because of persecution and were moving out from Jerusalem. The Christians were hunted down like animals, locked up and killed. They stood for what they believed, and the church continued to grow. Churches were planted all over the known world at that time. Now, the apostles were backtracking to check on the growth of those churches and to plant more churches. We are currently in Acts chapter 19 in Ephesus, and our church planter is Paul, the author of about 13 books in the New Testament. Let's see what we can learn about the baptism with the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts. Paul took the interior road and went to Ephesus. Paul was on his third missionary journey, and Ephesus was his home for about three years. Ephesus also is the home of the Temple Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. This marble temple was 239 feet wide and 418 feet long, according to its ruins. It is located in modern day Turkey and was built to honor Artemis, the Greek goddess of hunting and fertility. Ephesus was a major commercial center on the province of Asia. Paul saw, found some disciples in this major central metropolitan area and noticed something missing. Paul asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Why is this important? Because when baptized with the Holy Spirit, the power that we receive makes us effective witnesses, devil defeaters, disciplined servants of Jesus Christ, draws us closer to God, Bible readers, and Bible believers. Signs and wonders will follow our witness. These signs and wonders will confirm the gospel we teach and preach to unbelievers, and it will seal the truth in the heart of believers. It affirms what we as believers already know. Yes, God is real and a miracle worker even today. The disciples Paul found that Ephesus answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 19, verse 2. That's a fascinating response. Did you, did you, did you, did you, did you, did you hear about the Holy Spirit when you received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If not, something is missing. Maybe they had not heard he had been given or was being given. While Jesus was yet living and attending the festival of the tabernacles, he said, quote, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, Rivers of living water will flow from them. By this he meant the spirit 
whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. This scripture can be found in the book of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. Maybe they didn't realize in Ephesus that Jesus was glorified on the cross. So the baptism with the Holy Spirit was happening. We must preach and teach the whole gospel. We must not leave out important points. We don't want something to be missing. The text, the text says in Acts chapter 19, verses 3 and 4. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus, close quote. It seems that whoever was their teacher did not quote all of Matthew chapter 3 and 11 when they explained the gospel to these believers or the believers forgot that part. Paul either told them or reminded them that John the Baptist pointed them to believe in Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 3 Verse 11 says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Close quote. When we invite Jesus Christ into our lives, we repent of our sins and turn to God. When Jesus comes to live in our hearts, the Holy Spirit and God comes with Jesus. It seems as if these disciples had not received salvation. Thus, Paul baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 19, verse 5 says, On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul recognized something was missing and filled in what was missing. In verses in Acts 19, 6 and 7, when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were 12 men in all, close quote. This particular time, they received the baptism with the Holy Spirit by laying hands on them. It is not necessary to have hands laid on you. Baptism with the Holy Spirit is when the Holy Spirit overflows our body and soul. These disciples were no longer missing out on the blessing of the baptism with the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifts that come with baptism. The disciples received two gifts, speaking in tongues and prophecy. The gift of speaking in tongues comes along with the baptism of the Holy, with the Holy Spirit most of the time. So how does the baptism with the Holy Spirit help us today? Well, I'm glad you asked. It empowers us to defeat the enemy. You see, Jesus defeated the devil on the cross. The bell was sounded, game over, but the devil is still throwing licks at you and me. 1 John chapter 3 and 8 tells us the one who does what is simple is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. That's why God came. That's why Jesus came, to destroy the devil's work. 1 John 3 and 8. You see, the enemy is powerful, just not more powerful than God. We need encouragement and discernment to know what is of the devil and how to defeat him. We need encouragement and discernment to know what is of the devil and how to defeat him. He has wreaked havoc in some of our lives. We cannot let the devil have our families. We have to declare war and take back what has been stolen from us. We were given peace, and the enemy can't have our peace. John 14 and 27, Jesus tells us, 
peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid, close quote. The Holy Spirit will bring back the scriptures you have heard and studied to your remembrance. John 14 and 26 tells us, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. We learned in Mark chapter 9 about a boy who was possessed with, by an evil spirit, and his father brought him to Jesus to be healed. When Jesus asked the father about the boy's condition, he explained it and was iffy about Jesus healing the boy. Mark Chapter 9, verse 24, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. If you want to overcome your unbelief, you need the baptism with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit operating in your life. The Holy Spirit pours out God's love and helps us to understand suffering. In Romans chapter 5, Verses three through five, hear what it says. Not only so, but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Close quote. The Holy Spirit works in our daily lives. The Holy Spirit frees us from the power of sin. Romans 8 and 2 says, because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Romans chapter 8 verse 26, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. These are some of the things and some of the ways in which the Holy Spirit helps us in our everyday lives. You need the power to make it through this wilderness and navigate the landmines that have been set by the enemy. Now, after these last seven weeks of hearing about the baptism with the Holy Spirit, are you still on the fence about wanting to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? Have you been so overwhelmed with grief from these pandemics that you have grown weary? Has sickness overtaken you? And are you wondering, does God heal? Has the enemy, the devil, just beat you down so bad that you are questioning your relationship with God? Has life kicked you? and you cannot seem to be able to get up? If your answer is yes, and you are still on the fence, I suggest that you take the next 40 days, Lent, and read and absorb the book of Luke in a version of the Bible that you can understand. Try the NLT, the New Living Translation. Try the NIV, the New international version or the message bible note that in john chapter 14 verse 12 it says very truly i tell you whoever believes in me will do the works i have been doing and they will they will do even greater things than these because i am going to the father now you and i were meant to do greater works Every promise in the Bible is for us. We are children of God, and God wants the best for us. Also, you may go to the website and listen to the sermons beginning in January 2022, preached on first, third, fourth, and fifth Sunday. If you are living a defeated life, you need the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Ask yourself, do you desire to be all that God has called you to be? Do you need more power to live holy? Do you even want to live holy? 
Do you want to be an effective witness? Do you want more power to defeat the enemy? If your answer is yes, you need the baptism with the Holy Spirit to be effective. Today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, raise your hand or put it in the chat and we will pray for you. If you have never invited Jesus Christ into your life and you want to be saved, repent of your sins, raise your hand or put it in the chat and we will pray with you. Raise your hand or put it in the chat if you want to be saved this morning, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you have drifted away and want to renew your commitment to Jesus Christ, raise your hand or put it in the chat. Raise your hand or put it in the chat. If you want to renew your commitment to Jesus Christ, raise your hand or put it in the chat. If you want to join this church, Wayman AME, raise your hand or put it in the chat. If you want to join this church this morning, Raise your hand or put it in the chat. If you want to join this church this morning, raise your hand or put it in the chat. If you want to renew your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, raise your hand or put it in the chat. If you want to be saved this morning, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, raise your hand or put it in the chat and we will pray with you. If you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and receive the gifts of the Spirit, raise your hand or put it in the chat and we will pray with you this morning. If you want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and receive the spiritual gifts, then raise your hand or put it in the chat this morning and we will pray with you. Are there those this morning that want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and receive the spiritual gifts that God has for you? Raise your hand or put it in the chat. Hallelujah. Don't be scared. God desires for you to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. God desires for you to have the power to live the life of an overcomer. Raise your hand or put it in the chat. Hallelujah. If you desire to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, raise your hand or put it in the chat this morning. Today's your day. This is your time. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Dear God, don't you want to receive all that God has for you this morning? Ah, uh, don't you want to receive the blessing of the baptism with the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifts that God has for you? Raise your hand or put it in the chat. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless him. Bless him this morning. Raise your hand or put it in the chat. Hallelujah. Oh, bless it. Oh. Hallelujah. 
to anyone this morning that wants to receive the blessing of the baptism with the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. If so, raise your hand, or put it in the chat, and we will pray with you. Bless him. Raise your hand. I'll put it in the chat. Glory to God. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you 